Do you know what's even better than having an awesome video card in your own personal computer at home to play video games on? Having two of them. So if you're going for Crossfire or SLI, be prepared to be disappointed that you don't have enough money. Besides being irresponsibly expensive to have multiple GPUs in your system, it often doesn't actually benefit you that much in most modern games. Fewer and fewer titles are supporting SLI and Crossfire. So, I 3D printed my own GPU that doesn't have to deal with that because it doesn't need any drivers, but it also doesn't do any graphics workloads. But, it does help other GPUs in the system, and I'll explain how. If we go ahead and pull this out, we can see it's not a real graphics card. It is just 3D printed plastic that looks vaguely, sort of, kind of like a graphics card, but it's really just a holder for two fans. These are 80 millimeter fans, which isn't super important, but what is important is that they move air. And with Pascal and Vega and other not quite so recent GPU families, temperature greatly affects the performance that you get out of your graphics card. So with $5 worth of plastic and $10 worth of fans, let's see how much thermal headroom we gain back for our 1070 Ti. So basically I'm going to benchmark this 1070 Ti in four different situations. First, mount it exactly as you see it with no aids whatsoever, just a standard graphics card in a computer case. I have the side panel off just for getting this b-roll footage, but it's on for all the tests. I also tested it using the vertical GPU mount. In the Thermaltake View 37 case I have, it's a full inch away from the side panel, so it's better than some other cases. And for the last two tests, I had the fans in my 3D printed fake GPU blowing up, and then I did all the tests with it blowing air back down at the back of the GPU. So let's see what's what. If you want to know where these temperature numbers come from, I'm not adding any additional thermocouples like Gamers Nexus does. They're a bit more hardcore than I can afford to be right now. So instead, I'm just using the built-in nine thermal sensors on EVGAs for the Win2 card. Here's just one of the tests. Don't worry about getting numbers, but just know I'm testing the card at lots of different power consumption levels so that we'll get an idea of just how much heat is produced under a ton of different scenarios. Last thing before getting to the data, if you're going to be doing tests at home, that's perfectly fine. Just make sure that you're benchmarking consistently so that you get usable data. If you're testing Rise of the Tomb Raider, for example, like I was, I always did it in one particular spot every single time. If you test it in Geothermal Valley versus at one of the base camps in the beginning of the game, there is a huge difference in thermals here, and it's not because my computer had something else running in the background, it's literally that different parts of the game stress the GPU differently. All right, enough preaching, let's get into some thermal data here. In blue, we have the GPU mounted vertically, again, 2.5 centimeters away from the glass or one inch. In purple, we have the GPU's exhaust from the heat sink being sucked across the back plate and then up towards the exhaust of the case and towards the CPU cooler. And then in red, we have the hot air coming from the CPU and from the GPU exhaust being blown right back at the GPU again, which kind of helps because we're moving more air, but it's less helpful because the air we're moving is hotter. And it'll be interesting to see how the purple and red lines are more or less effective than each other later on down the line here. But basically, if you're going to do nothing on your GPU, look at that temperature difference we got just from having air being sucked from the GPU and blown back up. A test that will definitely not leave your graphics card idle is Ethereum mining. As we can see, the vertical GPU mount is by far and away the worst option here. Do not do it. Something else that's interesting is that if we're sucking hot air and blowing it across the GPU, it is not nearly as helpful as if we had just not 3D printed this monster in the first place. But if you are going to 3D print a fake graphics card and spend days just making a couple fans look moderately more tolerable in your system, 
If you have them sucking air away from the back plate of the graphics card, you can shave off a couple of degrees over standard mounting. Next up, Monero mining. Significantly less power hungry, significantly less heat. In fact, there is so much less heat with Monero mining that even though we're blowing technically hot or heated air back into the GPU with the red line, it is actually more effective than not having it at all, which was not the case with Ethereum mining. So interesting to see how that changes depending on the heat of the GPU. But then again, if your GPU core is only 51 degrees Celsius or 52, do you really need to cool it down any more than that anyway? Probably not. But still, if you want to shave some extra degrees Celsius off your GPU as a whole, a couple extra fans can do that. Getting into some eSports titles now, Rocket League. Again, don't vertical mount your graphics card if you're after the best of the best thermals. One thing that was really interesting to note here is that for power delivery, basically it doesn't matter if the extra air is being blown up or down, it's pretty much the same and generally one to two degrees better. As for memory, again, having it blow extra air is good. Same for the core, though, not quite as much. Firing up Dota 2, basically the same thing as before, except that the power delivery for thermometers 1 through 3 is a bit closer to how it was with standard mounting procedures. Otherwise, same as Rocket League. Something that is definitely not the same as Rocket League is when we're running Tomb Raider at the very high preset at 1080p with 10 CPU cores mining. Rocket League has got nothing on that. Again, vertical mounting your GPU, don't do it. Blowing extra air is better. However, blowing air up away from the GPU is once again best by a measurable amount. Not necessarily a life-changing or behavior-changing amount, but an amount that can be measured repeatedly. Lastly, we have Minecraft. Not your typical eight-year-old Minecraft, mind you, because we've got some killer shader packs and a ridiculous texture pack thing going on here. While this level of Minecraft detail may not demonstrate a responsible use of one's time, it does, however, demonstrate that if you're planning on doing a vertical GPU mount in a Thermaltake View 37, you do not know the way. But if you're going to 3D print your own GPU fan booster, blowing air down is also probably not the way things should be done. However, blowing air up away from the GPU does appear to shave a couple degrees off here and there. So if you want to stare at some of the test results just to see kind of what bases I covered for different tests, here's a screen to look at for that. If that's not exactly your cup of tea, you know what could be your cup of tea? Leaving a comment down below explaining what better things I could have done with the four days it took to design and 3D print this GPU. And then once you've done that, make sure to upvote some of the more trolly or humiliating comments, I guess. And then like this video itself. Make sure you're subscribed and check out some of our other videos. Thanks so much. I'll make sure to see you in the next one.